Okay, in this example, we want to find the work required to pump the water out of the spout, um, given that the water is in this full tank. Okay. Or assume that the tank is full. Okay. So in this in this case, I'm going to approach this by putting the coordinate axis at the center. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw those in. So this will be your this will be the x-axis. And here will be the y-axis. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in the representative piece. So that's let's place it here. Okay. okay. And this is going to have a thickness of delta y. And we're going to assume that this is at a height of y. Okay. Now keep in mind, uh, this is up here. Okay. This is positive 6. And down here is negative 6. Okay. Based on how we position the coordinate axis. Okay. All right. So... So now if we think about this, okay, think about the equation of the circle, okay? So I'm gonna write that here. So that is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals to r squared, okay? So if I take the, if I take a plane and cut it through the origin of this tank, uh, then it will give, it will give you a, a circle with a radius of six. So let's see if this makes sense, okay? So that means that this origin, okay, that is where h and k is equal to zero. So if we plug those in, okay, so if we let h be zero and k be zero, then we get x squared plus y squared equals to the radius, which is six, and that's gonna be 36. So that's the, uh, that's the equation you see here x squared or the graph of this equation okay which is just a circle okay so this is what we're going to use uh, in order to find in order to find the radius of this represented piece so we need to find this length here okay and that has to be in terms of y since we're going to integrate in turn in the direction of the y-axis all right so the first thing we need to do okay is we need to find the incremental volume Okay, so that is going to be, okay, so it's going to be pi times, so it's pi r squared times delta y. So remember the length here, the, the radius, okay, um, needs to be expressed in terms of y. Okay, so we can get that information from this equation. So that's going to be, x is going to be equal to square root of 36 minus y squared. So, okay, so that's going to be square root of 36 minus y squared times delta y. Okay, so that is the incremental volume. Okay, and we can simplify this to give, and that will give you 36 minus y squared times delta y. All right, so now that we have the incremental volume, then we can use the water weight. Okay, we can use this water weight to find the incremental force. So that's the next step. Okay, so the incremental force will just be 9,800 times this. Okay, 
Okay. All right, so next up, uh, we need to find the incremental work, which is uh, going to be the incremental force times the distance. So the represented piece here is sitting at a distance of y units above the x-axis. So we're given that, remember that the radius is 6 and h is 2. So that means this piece has to go a distance of uh, 8 minus y because you have 6 for the radius for the top part and then h is 2. Okay, so we're going to take that distance and multiply it by the incremental force. Okay, so the incremental force is 9800 times pi times 36 minus y squared times the distance. So the distance in this case, remember, is going to be 8 minus y. Okay, so now we're going to take the sum of those, so the, the, the work. So remember the work is equal to, okay, or actually it's the work is approximately the sum of the incremental work. And by taking the limit of that, so your partitions are going to, you're adding in more partitions. Your delta y is getting smaller. So that's going to translate to the integral. So the work is going to be the integral of this expression. Okay, so this, remember, this gets smaller and smaller. That gives you your... That's getting infinitesimally small, so that gives you dy. And our bounds, okay, so our bounds are going from, okay, so we're interested in finding the work of the full tank. So the bounds for this is going from minus 6 to 6, okay. Now, if you want, you can actually split this up, or you can you can uh, double the result. You can integrate from 0 to 6 and then just double, double the result, so that should give you the same answer. Okay, so integrating this, just using the power rule, okay, you end up getting 22,579,200 pi joules. Okay, in the next example, I'm going to do the same problem, but use, uh, but I'm going to place the coordinate axis at the bottom. It's a more, it's a little more complicated, but um, we should still be able to get the same answer.